If you all together hold your peace at this time, then enlargement and deliverance shall come from another place and you and your household will be destroyed. In other words, so he was, he was showing her that you're not safe if you're a Jew because uh, Haman's decree was for all the Jews to be killed. Everybody there? All right, we're going to begin at verse number one, and we're going to read all the way down through, well, actually, we're going to read the 17 verses. Beginning at verse one, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened to him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spake unto Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called, but I have not 
been called to come in to the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai called, commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went, went his, his way, way and, and did, did according, according to all that, all that Esther had, had commanded, commanded him. him. Praise the Lord. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Our Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you. We give you praise. We bless you. We thank you for the word of God that is about to come forth. We ask, Lord, that you would minister unto each heart the truths that you've opened up to us, Lord God, that we may know more of your mind, your heart, your wisdom, your will, and your divine purpose. We thank you, Lord God, for these that are here. Strengthen each and every one. And let the word, Lord God, minister to our hearts in a very special way. Let changes take place. Let shifts come in our heart and our thinking and our attitudes of heart, Lord God. Let it be a refreshing to our hearts and let it be food and substance, Lord God, and let it accomplish the divine purpose of God. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory shall be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I want to briefly perhaps use for a thought or you're just in time for the kingdom. You're just in time for the kingdom. The Key verses that I want to zero in on is what um, Mordecai spoke to Esther when he made his second request for her to go in to the king. And put these pages together. And she. Uh, had become the king's wife, and but she hadn't been in his presence for 30 days. She hadn't come into the king. So there was not a lot of intimacy there. They, they, they uh, were able to have many wives, the kings were, especially in that uh, <clears throat> culture. And so it was a fact that they could not come in to the presence of a king uh, anyone that uh, were not bidden except the uh, golden scepters held out to them, giving them favor so that they could proceed and come to the king. And Esther was quite aware of that, and so Mordecai it was uh, upset with what had taken place, as you've seen. Uh, the previous chapters spells it out a little clearer of what really took place uh, with uh, his crying and his bitter cry, uh, Haman had been elevated and exalted to a high position, and Mordecai was his enemy because Haman uh, had received orders through that high position that those that were uh, under him would worship him and bow, pay obeisance. And the Jews, of course, they um, were not to do that, bow to only to God and worship God. And um, so that proposed a problem, and, uh, but we'll get into that more. But I would like to say uh, God had been speaking to my heart about uh, we have special assignments. God assigns special assignments to his people. 
And he touched on that, I think, a little bit last week, how we, um, some of the characters in the Bible, each one had a, a special assignment from God. And just kind of reiterating to us that we must uh, become familiar with our assignment, know what it is, and pursue it uh, with a, a, a real persistence and diligence and determination. And <clears throat> knowing that God is, is with us. So here is one Esther which had a special assignment from the Lord. And um, she being a Jew and she was an orphan. Her parents had died and she was cousin to Mordecai. It was her uncle. I mean, her uncle's, uh, Mordecai's uncle's daughter. And it was during the reign of King Ahasuerus, or Xerxes. He reigned, it was said, according to history, somewhere between 450 to 400 uh, B.C. And he was very mighty. The empire was very big. There was 127 provinces. And um, so he had princes ruling over these um, territories or uh, provinces there. And so the empire was very great, Medo-Persian. And, he, um, and it ruled from India to Ethiopia. So it was a, l a large, large uh, span of uh, territory. Um, and... Note this, Esther's beauty brought her to the kingdom. That's significant. We'll talk a little about that on further as we go. So uh, we have here, um, and I think in, in Ezra chapters 6 and 7, you can, it's somewhere in that time that was mentioned in, Esther's, in Ezra 6 and 7. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so we're in time... For the kingdom. I want you to look at somebody next to you and say you're just in time for the kingdom. Mordecai had told uh, Esther when he summons her to go in to the king to intercede on the behalf of the uh, children of Israel. And God is not really mentioned in this book, but you see his providence throughout. And... Uh, Mordecai, after getting the news of the wicked Haman, what he had plotted to have all the Jews destroyed because he was so angry with Mordecai. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> when Mordecai got the um, decree from the king because he had gone out, gained such favor with the king and was able to uh, have a decree made. And during those times, the decrees from uh, the Medo Persians could not be altered. It was just an established fact. So that saying is there to this day because they had such wise men and they had put a lot of thought into the decrees that they made so that they would not alter them. And so uh, Mordecai being aware of that and when the decree came out, he was just devastated because um, that meant they were going to work to destroy all the Jews. There's three things I want to see if I can uh, uh, give to you today concerning this special assignment given unto us. It is not by chance that we came into the kingdom of God at this time. It is not by chance that, um, you know, you could have been born during the time of Moses, you could have been born during the time of David or Samuel or Job or Abraham. Could have been born during the time of the um, Holocaust. You could have been born during the time of the early church beginning. And, but you and I were not born during that time. We were saved strategically and God brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want you to keep that in mind. And three things I said I wanted to 
Well, there were four things, really, that I wanted to sort of add to your memories or mine. One is Esther had come to the kingdom for such a time as that. Esther had come to the kingdom for such a time as that. <coughs> a decree from the king had been made, as we just said, and what was taking place was the Jews were scheduled to be destroyed at a certain time. And the real historical uh, foundation for this book had to do with the um, understanding or the origin of this Feast of Purim. This was really the historical reason for this book being written. Um, they still observe that feast today, the Jews. And um, a few things were said about it when they read that. They, and then when they call that name Haman, they just they make a loud noise, an angry noise. It's just uh, because of what had taken place. So the, the Jews have a way of celebrating feasts when, when uh, the victory came and uh, God instituted in, in those, those things. So Esther had come to the kingdom for such a time as that. Now, I'm sure that Esther really wasn't given a lot of thought to the fact that she had come to the kingdom for such a strategic time. And sometimes it can happen to us the same way. We are not really uh, aware as we should be as to God bringing us strategically into his holy kingdom at a certain time. And uh, times are difficult and perilous times, but God saved us at this time and brought us into the kingdom. Uh, the, the, there were three feasts that was talked about, mentioned. One was the Feast of Ahasuerus, Hazarus, the king. The other one was the Feast of Estes. And then the other one was the um, Feast of Purim. And those three feasts, there are certain things that took place during those feasts. And uh, uh, we are not going to get into a lot of detail concerning this, these uh, feasts here. But uh, Mordecai made a uh, request. He made two requests after getting the news of what took place uh, through Wicked Haman. To plot to have them killed. Now, uh, just to briefly, um, when Haman got elevated, exalted to the position that the king exalted him, king took his ring off and put it on his hand, and so he had authority, and he would go in and out of the gate, and everybody would bow, and all the others that were there, along with Mordecai, the men, they would bow as well, but Mordecai wouldn't bow to Haman. And Haman could not stand it. So the men that were there with him, they kept asking him, you know, this is, this is the grief from the king, so why are you not bowing? You know, this is very important, you know. And they couldn't figure out why, so he let them know I'm, he's a Jew, and Jews, you know, they only worship God and this kind of thing. And so they, they, they didn't know if that was going to stand before the king. So finally, after they could not convince Mordecai to do it, change his mind, and they, they, they got that word back to um, the upper authority. And Haman, him noticing that, he just, he really, really, it, it, it couldn't stand it. Every day he'd go in and out of the gate, and everybody would bow but Mordecai. And so um, it got the best of it. Now, I want to I share a little thought with you. I want you to keep this in mind. There's some things we'll talk later, but. Never let one person's attitude get the best of you. You're going to see what happened to Haman as a result of that. And um, so Mordecai, as a result of that, made two requests. The first request he made was to tell Esther, uh, after she saw him outside the gate, uh, crying and lamenting and so bitterly, she sent word uh, by one of the uh, king's units to... Uh, give him a change of raiment for the chamberlain. And so he, uh, he wouldn't receive it, you know. And then finally she sent the chamberlain back again to find out, well, what is the cause? What's, what's, what's going on? What's really going on? And, and uh, so then he made known to her what had 
taking place by Haman to have the Jews destroyed. And uh, so he asked her, he sent word that says, I want you to go into the king on behalf of the people. So she said, mm, you know, she sent word back to him and says, you know, the, you know the laws around here. You know, one can go in the court of the king unadvised. Otherwise, there's one rule, and that's death. Except he hold out that, sep that scepter, the golden scepter of a fa showing favor. So, uh, but that didn't uh, stop Mordecai from saying, you know, you, you, you're, uh, you're in a position to talk to the king, you know. And so, remember now, Esther was afraid for her life, right? Because you're a dead person. If you go into the courts, in a course, and, and the king looks and sees you, and he does is his disfavors upon you, when he looks and sees you there, then you're dead. But if you went into the inner court unadvisedly and he looked in upon you with favor, then he would lift up the golden scepter and, and then they would proceed and come forward and touch the end of the scepter. So when Mordecai told Esther, go in and talk to the king on behalf of our people, she said, well, you know, you know the deal around here. I can't go. And I haven't been there in 30 days. In other words, I haven't had, he hadn't sent for me. So I, you know. And so Mordecai, he, he understood that Esther felt that because she was in the palace, she was protected. And, and you know, uh, I got to thinking about the, so many things that are going on in our world today. We see people dying, just drive-by shootings, people being killed in so many ways. And... Uh, and I, I suppose that, like Esther, it's easy to just say, mm, 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 that's bad. But, but what Mordecai told him, this is what he said. He said, now, do not think that because you're there in the house, in the palace, that you're safe from this decree of the king. It says all Jews, Right? And so he said, now, if you all together at this time hold your peace, somebody said, we need to talk to people about Jesus. If you all together hold your peace at this time, then enlargement and deliverance shall come from another place. And you and your household will be destroyed. In other words, so he was, he was showing her that you're not safe if you're a Jew because uh, Haman's uh, decree was for all the Jews to be killed. And since you are a Jew, you may be in the palace, but you're still a Jew, right? And uh, so I guess that was a sobering thought to her. And then he says, who knows whether or not you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Are y'all here? And I, God began to deal with me about the special assignments. And as he took me to Esther. And uh, he started to just kind of unfolding things. And she could not, Esther could not remain insulated from the decree any more than anybody else. That's what Mordecai pretty much let her know. And he said, if you refrain silent at this time, it will not let this people... Uh, down or, or God Mordecai had this faith okay he knew that God was going to do something and he wasn't trusting in Esther he was saying if you hold your peace at this time in deliverance and enlargement is going to come from another place so God's faith his faith was in God and not Esther y'all hear what I'm saying but he was kind of shaking her to say uh, uh, you're uh, God's dealing with you may be dependent too on your own faithfulness to him. You know what I'm saying? And so, if, in other words, if you've been put in a position, somebody say position, to be an influence, then you need to make that real. You must uh, uh, use it to the uh, uh, glory of God, right? 
And sometimes we've been put in position on our jobs and other places like that, and um, we, we want to have that uh, right influence and know that we've been put there for a special purpose. Um, the second thing I want you to see that she had come, not only did she come to the king, had come to the king for a second time is that. Uh, in dark times, God is making lamps with which to remove the gloom. In dark times, just what God was just nudging me, in dark times, times are t- tough, dark and uh, wickedness is abound and sin abound. In dark times, God is making lamps, developing vessels that is, with which to remove the gloom. So God is preparing and raising up people to, as lamps and lights to sit them in dark places so that they can be a light. And so what had happened is God knew what was going to take place. Uh, the decree coming from the king as a result of Haman, he knew what was going to take place. But he had brought Esther to the kingdom for such a strategic time. This was going to be the thing where God was going to bring her to the kingdom and use her as a deliverer for, for the Jews. And so uh, what, is, what is really, really important for us to know is that we're in dark times. And from the leadership of our nation on down, there's so many things that are taking place and things are in place for us that things could happen to us that normally would not happen to us as a nation. So we need to know that we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, a time when we have been given access to the throne of God to intercede on the behalf of our cities and our state and our uh, federal government and our nation. And uh, so, I, I, you know, there's the scripture says, woe unto those that are at ease in Zion, right? So nobody should be at ease ease in Zion with all the things that are taking place in our world because they will affect us also, saints. And so I hope there is, a, uh, there is an alert cry uh, uh, for you and I because if we all together hold our peace and don't do what we are called to do at this time, we may find ourselves suffering as a result of our being silent. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So God is raising up lamp. Oh, yeah. 